Amen. I want the praise team to back me up a little bit here. I'm going to try to sing a little melody, and I may forget part of the words. If I do, you won't come in on it. Give me a key that I can fit into back there. Praise God. Down from his glory. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You can pick it up. You have good voices. You can be an earthly choir. Praise the name of the Lord. This song is called Down from His Glory. And I've loved it ever since I heard it in Tampa, Florida, when I was a lad of 12, 13 years of age. Sister Vitale sang it on the campground many years ago. Praise God. It's, it, the melody is to a, a, a song that's in the Latin language, Spanish language, uh, and the same melody. Down, down from his
That's what songs are about. That's why we sing songs. It's to let you enter worship. I'm in worship when I sing that song. I'm only one. The body of Christ is to be one. I'm striving with everything I do, everything I say, every telephone call I make, every time I stand in this pulpit, every time I talk to the children of God here, to not divide the church any further. But to strive for that one body that we know must be there when Christ comes again. That one body, not two, not three, one body. If you think I'm egotistical, what I say, God doesn't have many churches and he's coming back for them. And I resent the term that sometimes is used in religion, go to the church of your choice. If it's your choice, it may not be God's choice. But if you follow the Holy Spirit, he'll take you to the right place at the right time. We sing songs to bring people into worship. We minister to bring people into worship. This is not a theater. It's not an act. It's not a rehearsed program that we're trying to impress you with with Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. It is a people of God this place stands for, represents a free, interdenominational, as the term is used. Yes. That means it doesn't belong to any organized sect of religion. That's it. That means that we strive to let Christ be the head of this place. Yes. It's a free, open place of worship. Some say Pentecostal worship. That's your term. I say it can be used because I believe in Pentecost. I believe in the day of Pentecost. I believe it happened scripturally. It's in the Bible historically. So I can say that this could be, this could be, uh, continue because I'm going to say that verse again. Praise our God. Amen. Uh, because uh, I believe the church should be a place of souls being saved. Sinners coming home. Conviction for sin. I believe the church should be a place where no program is necessary. But all we need is God's presence and the Holy Spirit to come in. I believe the church should be a teaching place where we teach you how to dress godly, act godly, be godly. I believe the church is a place where sometimes it may sound like the minister is even reproving or rebuking or exhorting, but he's doing God's will. He's teaching you, if you're teachable, the Word of God. He's giving you hope if you want hope. He's giving you help if you want help. And I have the deepest respect for a congregation. I expect them to have that respect for me. I believe that God brings his people together and I believe we're here today to enjoy one of the greatest services we've ever set in. If you lift your hands from me and praise him right now, the joy of the Lord will fill this house. Praise the name of the Lord. That's all there is to it. Just let the joy of the Lord run through your soul. Run through your spirit. Touch you. Help you. After all, you need and I need and we need God to change us. From one strength to another strength, from one glory to another glory. And we ministers should strive to teach people that Christ is the head of the church and that Jesus is coming again. We must live godly and holy on this earth, separate from sin, separate from the world, separate from all that is in the world. And whether people resent it, like it, or appreciate it, or they don't, I'm not running for an elected office. Nobody's going to vote me in or vote me out. God called me, and I must preach the word. And we must be faithful to the word. Praise the name of the Lord. And somewhere you must believe enough of the word and act upon that word to be saved because you're not going to heaven on a ticket you buy or something you have at the gate. You're going to go to heaven because God 
sees that you've changed into the image of his likeness and his fullness. I believe worship. We're singing this song. Worship with me, would you please? Just worship. Let God fill your life and fill your heart. Let's fill this place with a praise unto God. A joy of the Lord this afternoon. I came, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to hear his word. I don't know what you came to do. I came to get more of God. I could be more I can in this present life. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's start with one of the verses. Down from his glory.
I believe in the body of Christ. I believe in the one body. I honor the men of God that I've worked with and I can call names. I'm writing a book right now. I hope we finish it. Run, preacher, run is called. Mm -hmm. This book, uh, Run, Preacher, Run, is my story in life. And in that book, I call the names of many, many of the men of God I've met and I've worked with. Your name is there. I've called the name of elders that I've walked with and trooped with for 65 years of ministry. I talk about camp meetings I've been in and the vision God gave me. And in my beginning as a youth called to ministry, and how I was called to the one body for many, many years. In fact, the campground where Sue and Gene are uh, Gospel of the Kingdom campground that we support and will support. Um, I was, for 30 years, I was nighttime speaker there, giving all her calls, praying people through to the Holy Ghost. And uh, my story is a long story, so I won't go there. But I can tell you this. These men of God around me, I honor them, these elders. Many of them have been with me since they were young men. Many of them have spent uh, 40 years with me, 45, 50 years. I want the congregation to respect them. I want the congregation to honor them. Many of them are teachers like this man right here. And he'll be in the pulpit because I prophesied to him that God would take him past that stroke that he had. Yeah. And put him back in the pulpit. He'll be teaching. Yeah. And he'll be teaching here. And we're starting in the near future of uh, one night where we're forming a Bible college here at our church. And there will be intricate, deep teaching if you want to become equipped in the Word of God. Amen. And this man here will be one of the teachers and uh, others will be of the elders around me. <laughs> Some of you have walked with me, Brother Harrison, you've walked with me. You were a little boy when I came up here. Sister Marla walked in this place. Um, 50, uh, how long now? I'm losing track. Uh, here, 55 years. Uh, starting our 56 year. When I came here 56 years ago, Terry Harrison, his twin brother, Gary, you couldn't tell them apart. I was always calling Gary, Terry, and Terry, Gary. And, uh, and they, they met me out there, and that was a dirt street out there. There was no pavement there. There was no parking place across the street because we didn't own that property. We didn't own anything but a building right over here. We didn't own on the other side of it. They were going to build duplexes on the other side of this, right out that door. They were going to build duplexes. And the church was in debt, couldn't pay their bills. What a $150 electrical bill they couldn't pay. The roof was leaking. And Sister Marlon and I, led by God, came here, led by God, yes. and started with people, and we used to sit right down there, mm -hmm. she and I did, in chairs together. We had no music, had nobody on the platform. But God showed us but, yes. that this would be a great church. Yes. Did you know and how many will echo a praise of me? All God needs to do is show you Amen. where you're going yes. and what you're to do. Amen. And if you'll be obedient to it, how many believe God will bless you? Amen. Amen. Well, that's some of you. You're Amen. 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 I want to say that from my heart. I want to praise unto God. Amen. 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 How many believe that God will lead you yes. if you'll look, look up to God and say, lead me, Lord, and guide me, Lord, and keep me, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God will lead you and guide you. I, I want to say this on the other hand, not to glorify him because I don't do that. But the devil will also lead you the same way that God leads you. If you listen to him and you follow him and you're tasting and you're smelling and you feel like he's a good devil, he'll lead you right into hell and back or there to stay. God will, uh, but God will lead you. And God will take you from fear. God will take you from drugs. God will take you from uh, illicit living. God will take you from breaking his laws. 
God will take you from deep pits of those sin in the world. God will recover you. God will give you grace. God will uh, give you a help. Amen. All you need to do is look at him and say, Lord, I need a life change. I need a new direction. I need the Holy Spirit to come in. Praise the name of the Lord. I've watched through these 56 years God supply piano players and saxophones and drums and guitars and elders around me here. And the church has never gone begging. <coughs> and the day we paid that $150 bill, and I got up on this roof, and it's a steep roof, and hanging by a rope that I tied on the other side so I wouldn't fall off this side, I went down that roof, and I patched the hole in the roof. And rain has never come in since. Yes. And we paid our bills. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hundreds and thousands of people have come here. Yes. Thousands of people have heard the gospel. Yes. We could fill Hawkins Stadium today with ease. Yes. All the people that came Anytime. here and heard the gospel are here right now. Churches have blossomed from this church. Blair, Mississippi, Sebring, uh, uh, over here in Florida. Other churches across the nation have been uh, blessed of God. And this place stands for what it stood for then. It stands for an open door. It stands for a place of charity. It stands for sinners to come home. It stands for people to be one. It stands for no racial prejudice or uh, none of that stuff. Uh, you won't, don't get me started on that. I'll, I'll take somebody apart uh, on that. Because I don't see color, I don't see race, I don't see creed, I don't see riches, I don't see poverty, I don't see homeless people, I see just people that either need help or are getting help from God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. There's no respect of persons with God. Have your Bibles. I know I'll be for just a few minutes. I'm going to watch the Spirit very closely. In the book of Numbers, I want you to go to the 21st chapter. I believe, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope I'm right here. And, and uh, Numbers 21, is it? Let's go there for a brief moment while we consider Calvary and the message of the cross and the cross itself. And remember today, the sweetest name you know is Jesus. Amen. He wants us to bring his people together. I want all the ministers across the country, and some of them listen to this service here. I want them to know that Brother Marlowe does not stand for dividing the body of Christ. I do not stand for there being one body over here and one body over there. I believe when God's people meet, in June at Shepherdsville Hill, that is the family of God, the body of Christ. And that's going across the nation. And I believe today that God's people are one people under Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. My subject, let's get down to it, where I won't ramble all across the place. Um, in the book of Numbers, I'm reading from verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Verse 5, chapter 21. Did I give you the chapter? Yes. Verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Comment. It's strange, but it's true. People never talk about God alone. And they never talk against God alone. Did you know every conversation you'll ever hear is including some minister of God, some prophet, That's the truth. some evangelist, some teacher, some pastor, some elder in the work of God. Yes, sir. Because people never make a comment against God without including one of his servants. And they did this in the book of Numbers. They speak against God but they also speak against Moses. Yes. Yes. And here's what they said. Have you, and, and verse 5, Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, 
and our soul loatheth this light bread. How dare them call manna light bread? I get that from the bakery's flowers bakery down here, light bread. But you can never get manna from flowers bakery. But they insulted God. They said, God, you brought us up out of the Egypt. And would to God we died in Egypt because, and they didn't mean that because they were grumbling, griping when Pharaoh was giving them a straw to make bricks and slime to put it together. Yes, sir. They were not happy there. No. It, you know, it's amazing how that the human nature is so turned. And I may touch some nerves here, but if I do, God will give you a tranquilizer before it's said and done. <laughs> it's amazing to me how that people that were in dirty, dirty sin going to hell without God, without hope in this world. But God saves them, washes them, regenerates them, brings them out of the gutter, takes them from prostitution, takes them from drugs, takes them from bad behavior, bad manners, gets them off the street, homeless, I was homeless, cures their mouth of slang, gutter talk, pornographic language, removes their mind, restores their families, blesses them, gives them good jobs, good cars to drive, and they come to the church and start griping. The songs isn't good enough. The music doesn't have the right beat. Brother Marlow is preaching on the wrong chord. I don't like him anymore. He is, he's changed. Guess who changed? He's changed. 10 years ago, they didn't say that. 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 30 years ago. But Brother Marlow has changed. The church has changed. The band irritates me. The dining room doesn't serve me first. It's bad food. Brother Jim forgot how to cook. <laughs> he has a bad menu. Am I getting somewhere close right now? You say that was back there. I went to church. I thought of the little poem I heard. It said a man, a woman, or the, uh, their daughter and son went to church one Sunday morning. And the woman hit the choir and said, those fashions would never inspire. The man hit the elders and said, they remind me of anything but. But the voice of the boy cut in like a 